Brock here from Rock Hill Farms. And today I want to share some opinions about safety gear that may not be very popular. But, you know, I'm making videos on this channel either every day or at least several per week sharing what I do. And being on camera that much, all you can be is yourself. So, I'm going to tell you what I think about it. And the reason I'm making this video is... I have a few hours this morning and I came out and thought I'm gonna do a little bit of firewood. I go in the house to get my cameras and I had a couple of comments about safety gear in a specific video that's very popular and I get the same comment all the time. And if I get a repeated comment, I'm gonna address it because I try to give a thoughtful response to every comment left on my channel. If you take the time to watch one of my videos and tell you what you think, I'm going to try to give you a real opinion back. So, I get a comment a lot about my chainsaw chaps and my helmet. And it takes a lot of energy to type a full response to that, so we're going to do it today. But first I'm going to talk about earplugs and safety glasses, or hearing protection. So. I get a lot of comments about not wearing hearing protection on the tractor. So I went and got a decibel meter and I recorded the noise level coming from my tractor. I also recorded my chainsaws, a log splitter, lawn mower, a whole bunch of different things to try to have not just an opinion but actual information. Because my opinion was the tractor was not loud enough to be dangerous over short periods of time. But what if I'm wrong and I damage my hearing? So I got the decibel meter and I checked everything out. Out of everything I tested, the tractor was the quietest thing I have. The decibel range it was at, I'll put a link at the end of this video to that decibel meter video where I actually checked everything because it's been six months and I forgot some of the numbers. But I remember the important part was I took the decibel ratings that OSHA puts out and compared them to the equipment I'm running. And that a decibel rating for hearing protection is not a static number, there's also a time component. So I'm going to probably mess up the exact numbers, but you might have something that's 85 decibels and they consider prolonged exposure to 85 decibels to be potentially hazardous. So if you're doing it for 30 minutes or longer, you need hearing protection. But something running at 120 decibels, you need hearing protection regardless of time. So in terms of hearing protection, I think personally my choice, because I don't, I'm not here to tell other people what to do, but running a chainsaw, you should always be wearing hearing protection even if it's just for a minute. What might surprise a lot of people on the hearing protection is that my lawnmower is dramatically louder than my tractor. So if you don't wear hearing protection when you mow your lawn, you might want to think about it. At least if you're someone who criticizes YouTubers for not wearing hearing protection, you may not be aware that a lawnmower is actually really loud. So there's a lot of negative really hateful comments on YouTube and a lot of guys like myself who put out YouTube videos working outside get frustrated by the safety comments because it seems like they're constantly criticizing us about safety and it's easy to get mad about that but the truth is those people are coming from a good place whereas the guy who calls me fat I don't know if he's really coming from a good place but the person who tells me I should wear some safety gear, they're trying to do me a service and I want to be respectful to that, but everyone has to make their own choices. So I would say that the comments about hearing protection were helpful to me because previously I never wore hearing protection on the tractor. Now if I'm doing a five minute job, I don't wear hearing protection. If I'm going to be on the tractor all day, I'll put on some headphones. So, those people did a service for me. The next thing I want to talk about is safety glasses or eye protection. I'm outside working 90% of the time in my videos and you'll almost never see me without these sunglasses on. But if I do go inside, sometimes I'm careless about 
not putting on safety glasses when running a grinder or something. So that's something I can improve on. Now to the big one. One of the most popular videos on my channel has 125,000 views right now. And in that video, I make one cut with a chainsaw. So in that video, I mentioned that I almost always wear chaps. And I think I wore the helmet in that video. But I almost always wear my safety gear when running a chainsaw because it's extremely dangerous. And I said in the video, I'm only making one cut. So I'm not going to get my chaps. And I get a lot of criticism from that. I got two comments today on a video that's like a year old that it only takes one cut to hurt yourself. And I know that to be true because I actually put myself in the emergency room from a chainsaw several years back. So I know how quickly it can happen. So this is why I don't wear chaps for one cut. We gotta be completely honest and say one thing is laziness. If it takes longer to get the chaps and put them on than it takes to make the cut, I'm just kinda lazy. I'll admit that that is a portion of it. But the other thing is, how do chainsaw accidents happen? I've got this pile of firewood here, another pile up there. If I'm gonna cut all that up, there's zero chance I do that without the chaps. Because, you know, I don't wanna cut a leg off, right? But the way I've had near misses with the chainsaw was from doing a lot of cutting and kind of getting tired or lazy with my mechanics. If I'm making one cut with a chainsaw, first, I've just started the saw. Before doing so, I checked out the chain and made sure it was sharp and properly tight. The next thing is, I know I'm only making one cut. I know I'm not wearing safety gear. So, I'm setting my feet up at a good distance apart. I'm balanced. I'm focused on what I'm doing and how I enter the saw. And I think the least likely way to get hurt is to be completely focused on that cut. Now, if I'm making 500 cuts and working until I'm too tired to work anymore, there's no way you're gonna maintain that through every cut. You're at risk for tripping or losing your balance or having the log shift and those are le much less likely for one cut. The other point about wearing chaps is they don't completely protect you. There's uh, the whole rest of your body. So I actually cut my hand open and had to go have it stitched up. It was pretty, pretty gruesome actually. And wearing those chaps wouldn't have helped me there and neither would most gloves that I've got. So it's not com like it's complete protection. The safest way to cut firewood is to not cut it. It doesn't cost that much to buy some firewood. So what are we doing out here risking our lives with this chainsaw? But me personally, I like it, so I'm gonna keep doing it. And most of the time, I'm gonna wear my safety gear. But maybe not every time. I guess since I mentioned cutting myself with a chainsaw, I need to tell that story real quick. So, we had a bunch of trees in our yard. This was maybe 12 years ago, and I didn't even own a chainsaw. I borrowed an electric chainsaw, with maybe like a 14 inch bar on it, and it actually plugged in with a cord. I didn't have much experience with a saw, and that really wasn't the cause of the accident. You know, I spent a long time in manufacturing and in safety meetings where we were discussing all the accidents that had happened and how we prevent them, and the, the accident path on this is pretty clear. So I worked overnights, got off work at 7 a.m., come home, and I'm tired, and that affects your focus. And then we had a bunch of small trees in the yard and my wife wanted those trimmed up. Bunch of low hanging branches, they bothered me too, but she was kind of pushing me to get these trees trimmed. And so I go out there and cut a few that I could reach and said, I'm done. And she said, no, I want all these other ones that are higher. 
and I was in a bad mood. I didn't want to do it. And so I went and got this cheap ladder that we had and I leaned it against the tree and climbed up this ladder that wasn't very stable at all. And if you'd ask me, I would have even said it at the time. It, I, it wasn't the most stable way to do it. I was in a hurry. I wanted to be done. And there were a bunch of trees. And I was on the last one that I was going to do. And I go up on that ladder and I'm reaching up and the ladder shifted. And I felt like I was going to fall. And I immediate reaction is I'm going to land on this running chainsaw. So I, what I decided to do was to jump off the ladder so I could land on my feet. I'm only, my feet are only two or three foot up in the air. Probably about three foot. I decided I'm gonna jump off this and I tried to throw the chainsaw away from me and as I did, it had a cord on it and it spun around and cut through my hand right here. And on the way to the hospital, I was worried that I was gonna have permanent damage and not be able to fully use his hand anymore but that wasn't the case you can't even I mean the palm of your hands a different type of, of skin and there's really not even a scar there so I was incredibly fortunate but what would have saved me wasn't more safety gear it would have been being thoughtful about what I was doing and focused on the cut I was making and through all of this, I want to say I'm not advocating against safety gear. 99% of the time when I'm running a saw, I wear the gear. So that's the story of how I got hurt. So like I was saying earlier, the best way to avoid a chainsaw accident is don't cut firewood. But if you are going to cut firewood or do any of the other things that I do on a daily basis, the most powerful thing you can do to protect yourself is to focus on what you're doing and the potential hazards. I'll probably get hit for this one too, but I'm willing to lift myself in a basket on my loader. I know that hypothetically, and in real life, I know that a loader hydraulics can fail and it can drop on you. I've also put 550 hours on my tractor without it ever dropping and I've spent seven minutes out of those 550 hours supported by the loader. I wouldn't sit there and do it all the time, but if you need to do something to get up there real quick and come back down, the odds that it fails while you're up there are probably pretty similar to the odds of you getting hurt in any number of other ways. You can be an observant driver doing everything right and someone sideswipes you and that's a risk you take and if you don't want to take it you stay home same thing about lifting yourself with a loader how many hours of operation on average does it take for a loader to fall and what percentage of the time that you operate your tractor are you in the loader I might have done it three times for one quick thing and back down and so I don't have any problem with that. Sorry. I hate that this was such a negative video, but a couple comments got under my skin this morning and I just wanted to say what I think. So I appreciate you taking time to watch. I'm gonna to link to more of our videos over here and I'll see you next time.